as at CIT, at CIT and CERT. And she is going to take the session on OER and licenses. So uh, after this, you will be required to um, attempt an OER course. So please attend it very carefully. So for this, I would like to welcome Dr. Gulshan Mufit. Ma'am, are you here? Please unmute yourself, ma'am. Good ma'am. Right. Oh. Ah, okay. Yes, Nidhi. Okay. Thank so you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Nidhi, ma'am. Okay. Yes. yes. Good afternoon, everyone. So the present session is on open educational resources. And I hope you are aware of this term, open educational resources. So before this session in the morning, we had a session on uh, resources of Diksha. Maybe you have attended that uh, session very carefully. So if I ask you, what do you understand by this term, open educational resources? You know the meaning of educational resources, the digital resources. But if we say the educational resources are open, then what does this mean? So you can write your responses in the chat box. Yes, it is uh, the resources may be freely available or accessible to everyone. Yes, anybody can access free. Okay. Free of cost. Not permissible means Shri Hariji, you have written that non-permissible. What does this mean? Yes, no, accessible to everyone at free of cost. No copyright, free, self-paced. We can make updates. Uh, yes, right. Accessible to all at free of cost. Okay, in between, my colleague has posted the evening meeting, uh, evening attendance link. So kindly uh, post your attendance also. Yes, between your responses, there is the attendance link also. Kindly mark your attendance. Yes, you are right that the edu uh, educational resources which are freely available and it is allowed for everyone to access those resources. We can say that the resources available online which can be accessed easily by everyone are the open educational resources. So let me share my screen first and then we will go through the presentation. So here is a uh, definition which is given by OECD and it says that open educational resources are digitized material offered freely and openly for educators, students and self-learners to use and reuse for teaching, learning and research. It means that what you have responded that the resources, the digitized material or the resources which are offered freely and openly for anyone, for the stakeholders who are willing to use those resources and the self-learners also, uh, those resources can be reused by the uh, stakeholder and can be reused uh, in the teaching learning process and in the research also. So this definition is given by uh, OECD. And the another definition which is mentioned here in the blue color that technology op enabled open provision for educational resources for consultation, use and adaptation by the community of the users for non-commercial purpose. So there are a few uh, couple of def definitions which uh, we mentioned here to clarify the concept of educational resources. Now what uh, open educational resources includes? What, uh, what are the areas or what 
are the resources that could be uh, available online or freely. Those type of resources are mentioned here. And these are uh, virtual labs. OER refers to learning materials such as the virtual lab. These uh, virtual lab experiments are uh, openly available, freely available, which any stakeholder, whether it is teacher or a student, can openly access the experiments and they can experience the real time uh, experience of conducting any experiment through these virtual labs. So interactive videos are also available, which uh, comes under the category of open educational resources. There may be textbooks, there may be audio video lectures, there may be animations, audios, collection of journal articles, digital images, software tools. There are many resources. We have mentioned only few here, but there are more resources other than these resources, which comes under the category of open educational resources. So as you say in the responses that the open educational resources, which are allowed to openly access, uh, those resources can be reused by the user, okay? So here, uh, the hallmark of an open educational resource is the freedom you have to create, remix, and adapt, uh, adapt it uh, to your need. Anyone who is willing to use that open education resource in the teaching learning process or somewhere else, uh, especially in the field of education, is free to recreate those resources, to remix those resources, and adapt it according to their needs. <clears throat> So you may be also a user of open educational resources. You may have uh, used many resources. Uh, and we have also mentioned here in the slide the types of open educational resources. Uh, the open educational resources may be available as a courseware, as textbooks. And uh, uh, you, uh, I uh, hope that you uh, have access many open access journals also whether in the field of research whether uh, where uh, you, uh, suppose you have conducted any research or you want to study uh, something more on a particular topic so you uh, may have access these open access journals so we have provided some links here uh, like arvex.org duage.org jstor.org and I'll open some links for you so that you can see or you can explore these open access journals. So here is, uh, I have opened a link of doage.org. Here some open access journals are available. These are the international journals. So through this link, you can access the journals which are openly available for the researchers or for the person who is uh, willing to conduct any research. And uh, some other resources also uh, have mentioned here. Uh, we have uh, given the link of some repositories, like there is a library guides.lib.iub.edu. Here also, <clears throat> the, uh, it is a repository of open edu educational resources. And you can find what and how of any educational resource. So you can, uh, you can explore these links and you can access the resources available here. There are some more links also available on this slide for open images and open publishing. And we will share this PPT with you after the session. So uh, uh, whenever you open this PPT, you can explore to these open educational uh, resources. Now, what uh, there are some more open educational resources <coughs> available in India. Uh, at national level, uh, you must have heard about the SWAM learning portal. In the uh, morning presentation, Indu ma'am has uh, uh, taken you there on the open edu uh, the SOIM portal on which uh, uh, the school educational education courses uh, are launched. This is uh, uh, the, the SOIM portal is also an uh, OER. 
then nptel portal this is the uh, link of ncte <clears throat> and this is uh, the link of shod ganga and this is uh, on the left hand, left hand side the link of uh, ndl IT, iit kharagpur so nptel also provides open educational resources and under swam you will find many school education courses which are available uh, openly for the for students and in under NCTE also you will get many resources for teacher educators and <clears throat> in uh, the Shod Ganga it is a repository of researches if you want to conduct any research if you want to take any research and you uh, want to review the researches conducted on the same topic earlier so for that review purpose you can go through the Shod Ganga portal. <clears throat> There are some more uh, OER search tools. Uh, we have mentioned here the links. This is the OR common website. Then uh, we have provided a link here for uh, creative common search. And uh, another one is for OER dynamic search engine. So now uh, the question is how there are many open educational resources which are available and which are also free. So uh, how we can integrate those resources in the teaching learning process? How a teacher can intelligently use those resources which are openly available into the teaching learning process? <coughs> so uh, you all are teachers and somewhere you must have used the open educational resources in your teaching learning process also at any level whether you are uh, teaching at primary level or secondary or senior secondary level so if i ask here how did you integrate any open educational resource in your teaching learning process can you share any example with us you can write uh, in the chat box so this, this is a question for you that there are many open educational resources which are freely available. Have you ever used those resources in your teaching learning process? If yes, then how? Please write in the chat box. Hmm. So you have used Canva, OLabs. Thank you. I hope you have used OLabs on Diksha. Okay, Diksha is also an open source uh, platform. Yes, YouTube. Okay. So if you have used PPT for your D8 classes, then you must have checked the license also. Uh, Google and YouTube, but there are many types of resources there available on Google. You must have checked, you should check the license of any resource which are there on Google and which you are going to use. Okay. Pet Simulator, Diksha. Okay. So somewhere everyone has used one or the another kind of open educational resource. And a teacher must know how he or she can integrate the technology, the resource into their teaching learning process. So this, here are some points which uh, we have discussed that how a teacher can uh, uh, how a teacher can integrate any open educational resource in the teaching learning process. A teacher can also design a course 
in which he or she can use multiple type of resources with different formats and uh, a teacher uh, should have the ability or should have uh, uh, that talent that uh, he or she can uh, modify the resource as per the student's need. So if you are using or if you have used any uh, open educational resource, you must have faced some challenge also. So these challenges uh, we have mentioned here few that uh, you may ha have faced the challenge of uh, quality issue or the accuracy of the material. Uh, a teacher must uh, a teacher could have faced the issue of uh, hardware and software technology or the language or cultural views may be a barrier to use. And the next one is lack of physical contact and interactive discussion may hinder some students. So uh, it may happen that you are using some uh, type of uh, open educational resource in your teaching learning process. Uh, but uh, you may not be able to explain or you may not able to uh, use the resource uh, fully so that uh, there may be there may occur a difference between using and utilizing the particular resource. So these are the initiatives, the OER initiatives by NCERT. And about these initiatives, Indu Ma'am has discussed in the morning session in detail. So one of our initiatives is Eparshala, in which under which uh, the textbook of NCERTs are available there in PDF format and EPUBs, EPUB format and uh, Diksha is a repository in itself and it has a mul multiple of resources. Nishta is also <clears throat> uh, an initiative of, for uh, school heads and teachers holistic ad advancement and it uh, deals in the continuous professional development of teachers and uh, school heads. Another one is SWAM. Then uh, next one is of uh, ICT curriculum is also an initiative and the last one is of PME Vidya under which NCERT is having 14 channels and there are 200 channels which are distributing uh, distributed among states and UTs. And uh, presently Diksha, uh, the content available on Diksha is in uh, 38 languages. So here is some data uh, we have shared with you regarding Diksha that there are three, 316 crore learning session, 3,700 crore uh, minutes of learning and 2,200 crore page hits since 1st April 2020. So this is a uh, data slide. Now let's come to intellectual intellectual property right. So what do you understand by this term intellectual property right? Please write your responses in the chat box. What do you understand by the term intellectual property right? Yes, copyright, legal resource, anyone else? Different types of permissions, okay, that comes under licensing, okay. Copyright to anything created by uh, sharing news over IP. The rights given to persons over the creation of their minds, licensing, okay. Okay, free to ventilate own creativity. The rights of the content we prepared in teaching learning, right? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for your responses. Let's come to the term intellectual property, right? 
So intellectual property rights means uh, the rights you are giving or you are putting on the content which you have created only. It means the rights given on the content or the resources created by the creator only. So it is up to the creator what type of rights he or she is giving to the users. And from your responses also, I can figure out that you have a fair understanding of intellectual property right. So <clears throat> anything which you create is your property and if uh, the uh, thing is created by you intellectually, it may be any book, it may be any content, it may be in any resource that is called your intellectual property and you are only the owner, you have only the right to put any right on your created content. So <clears throat> there are uh, the intellectual property right, maybe the copyrights, uh, maybe the copyright and copyright refers to the legal right of the owner of intellectual property. And copyright, uh, this is the definition of uh, copyright. I'm just reading out one or two lines. Uh, copyright is a right to copy, which means that only the original creator of the product and only those whom they allow will have the sole pr privilege to reproduce or replicate the work. It means the, uh, the creator has <coughs> the rights only to allow anyone to change or reproduce their created, created content. It may include the artistic work such as novels, poems, I mean, it means that you can create anything which is uh, uh, anything which is created by you originally. They may be novels, poems, plays or films, musical work, artistic work, etc. Whatever it is, uh, which you created originally is your work and you are the only owner of that particular work and you have all the rights to allow anyone to make the changes or to replicate your work. So here is the definition of intellectual property, right? You can just read it out. I'm not going to read each sentence. Or you can take the screenshot of this. Otherwise, we will share the PPT with you. So here are also some more examples of original work. Just have a look on it. There is a more slide on examples of original work. Original work doesn't mean to only literally uh, literary work. It can be uh, original ornament, ornamental designs. It may be maps, sketches, charts, anything, anything which you create originally. So here are uh, the types of intellectual property. How many types of intellectual property are there? First one is copyright. <clears throat> and you very well know the meaning of copyright. Another one is trademark and the third one is patent. So copyright uh, we have just discussed and trademarks are the special symbol design or name of a company puts and patents are official right only person to make uh, use or sell a product or an invention document that shows uh, this is your right. So uh, you can take pa patent on any work which is your personal work. It may be a product or it may be a document also. And there is IPR policy also in India. The union, uh, union cabinet has approved the national intellectual property right policy on 12th May 2016. This is for your information only. 
so how can we use a copyrighted work if you find any copyrighted work on internet then how you can use that like uh, in the chat box uh, one of you responded that you take help from google and youtube <clears throat> so if you find any resource on google then how you can use that the you should be fair and if you are using someone else work you have to seek permission from the original author so this comes under the ethics of using any content any uh, product or any resource if you are using any copyrighted work <clears throat> you have to see the permission of the author first and you have to use that particular uh, content or resource or product fairly now here is the definition of public domain there are many content many uh, in intellectual property which, which lies in the public domain only so what does this mean if we say that the uh, intellectual property lies under the public domain then what does this mean do you understand what is this term uh, what is the meaning of this term public domain if any intellectual property lies under public domain then what what does this mean uh, no in social media it doesn't mean that the content which are available on social media is under uh, comes under public domain anybody can access right open to all free to all right newspaper but in newspaper uh, you read news and you read articles which are written by some author so if you are using any content from the newspaper you have to mention the name of the uh, name of the newspaper or and the author of that particular article with date so as the definition says material that are not protected by intellectual property laws such as copyright trademark or patent laws any content any material which Uh, that are not protected by intellectual property laws such as copyright yani kisi cheez ka jiska na copyright hai na trademark hai na patent hai that comes under public domain and no individual owns these work rather they own by the public so any content which lies under public domain it means you are free to use that content that resource and no one is the owner of that particular intellectual property you can use you can recreate you can reuse you can modify you can <clears throat> use anywhere where uh, wherever you want here uh, comes the licenses now we will discuss about the licenses what are licensing uh, lic uh, what are uh, Uh, what licenses you should use what well, the, uh, the types of licenses and the meaning of licenses very firstly so licenses are the permissions given by the copyright holder for their content we all know and copyright is still held by the creator in these cases <clears throat> but the creator has decided to allow others to use their work so if you are creating any uh, any intellectual property you are the owner of that property and you have all the right to set the copyright to, to set the conditions for the users how a user can use can reuse you are the only owner to decide about the copyright
so here are the four components of licensing which were, uh, we are going to discuss and we will also discuss the combination of all these four components of licenses <clears throat> so under creative common licenses there are four components of licensing licenses which are mentioned here first one is by second one is nc <coughs> Third one is ND and SA. If you are using by, it means attribution is required. If you are using licenses under Creative Commons and you are using the option of by, it means that attribution is required. If you are using NC, it means that your content, your the intellectual property <clears throat> should not be used commercially. If you are using ND, it means non-derivative. The uh, user cannot modify in the given resource or the resource created by you. So it is a restriction <clears throat> given by the author of the uh, intellectual property. The last one is share alike. And it means the license must be the same on any derivative works. Okay. So under share alike <coughs> license, one can share the resource with other users. So these are only the four components on the basis of which you can create your own license. But firstly, you have to understand the meaning of these four components by NC, ND, and SA. And one more thing which is mentioned here in blue color that ND and SA component cannot be combined. If you are creating a license for your content, for your intellectual property, you must not combine the ND and SA component. Now let's come with the combinations. Here is the first one is buy, and where you can buy, uh, where you can use this uh, buy uh, license. The license, this license, allow reusers to redistribute. Uh, sorry, to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format, so long as attribution is given to the creator. Just read it carefully. <clears throat> if you are using the license of buy and you have to write in this manner, CC buy, you can see a small image on the uh, right hand side here. Uh, if you find any copyright in this form, it means uh, here is the license given uh, of uh, given of buy, buy component. So under this license, the reusers are allowed to re distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format. And <clears throat> you must have given the attribution to the original creator. The next one is C CC by SA. By SA. So CC stands for creative commons if you, whenever you create a license you have to give this term uh, the creative commons cc by sa means that uh, this license allow you reusers to distribute the re, re, uh, reusers can distribute remix adapt and build upon the material in any medium or format so long, so long as attribution is given to the creator under this license also the re, uh, the re, uh, re user can distribute the resource, the uh, remix, he or she can remix the resource, adapt the resource and build upon the material on in any medium. But he or she should give attribution to the original author. So if uh, this is, uh, I have also mentioned this thing that if you are using anybody's content, if you are using anybody's resource, ideally you should give credit to the original author and uh, under these licenses also it says that the attribution should be given to the creator 
<clears throat> and this license allows for commercial use under uh, this license cc by sa the reuser can use the content for commercial use if you remix adapt or build upon the material you must license the modified material under identical terms it means that if you are recreating that particular content as per your need you must not change the license of that uh, content you should give the content uh, uh, sorry you should uh, give the license which is given by the original author to your modi modified resource the next one is cc by nc nc stands for non commercial and under this license uh, it allows reusers to distribute remix adapt build upon the material in any medium or format for non commercial purpose the definition is clear in itself the reuser can distribute remix adapt and build uh, and uh, build upon the material means uh, the reuser can modify the content but he or she cannot use <clears throat> that particular product or that particular resource that particular intellectual property for commercial use the next one is cc by nc sa cc by nc means non commercial sa means share alike the license allows reuser to redistribute uh, to distribute remix adapt and build upon the material in any medium or format this is the same uh, as in the previous licenses and the content created under this license should not be used commercially and only so long as attribution is given to the creator it is same as other that attribution should be given to the original author or the creator if you remix adapt or build upon the material you must license the modified material under identical terms under identical terms means you have to give the license for your modified resource uh, you have to give the same license for your modified resource which is given earlier to the original resource so whatever <coughs> is the license used in the earlier in the original resource you have Fabulous. to give the same license for your modified material and the last one is uh, it is second last uh, cc by nd by is the attribution and nd means non derivative and if you read this the meaning of this license this license allows reusers to copy and distribute here the new thing is that the reuser can copy and distribute the material in any medium or format in unadapted form only it means the reusers can share or distribute the original resource in the unadapted form you are not allowed to make any change in the original resource but also you have to give the attribution to the original author or the original creator of that particular resource so it is a symbol of <coughs> cc by nc nd here on the right hand side <coughs> you can see that how we can uh, write this like this type of license a human figure uh, is depicted for uh, this by and uh, for nd is equal to sign is used
the last one is cc by nc nd y is the attribution nc is non commercial and nd is non derivative nd stands for non derivative and it is the most strict or the most restricted license <coughs> This license allows reusers to copy and distribute the material in any medium or format in unadapted form only for non-commercial purpose only and only so long as the attribution is given to the creator. So in this license, reuser can distribute the material but he or she is not allowed to make any change in the original resource and also he or she is not allowed to use that particular resource for commercial purpose. And also the attribution should be given to the original author or the original creator. And you can see <clears throat> how NC is written uh, <clears throat> in an encircled uh, style. A dollar is given and it is bypassed by a, a line. So this is a symbol of NC and ND you can show <coughs> as uh, with an is equal to sign you can uh, show the ND. Here again which uh, we have discussed earlier this is the public domain license it, 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 uh, it is written like CCO. CCO in this manner you can write <clears throat> the license of public domain and we have discussed it, uh, this uh, public domain earlier it allows creator to give up their copyright and put their work into the worldwide public domain and uh, public domain allows you uh, reuser to redistribute remix adapt and build upon the material in any medium or format with no conditions. So you can see that this is the most liberal uh, type of licensing. Here no condition is given. You can use the content given uh, with the public domain license. Here there is no condition and you can use that particular content or resource anywhere, wherever you want. So we have put here a link uh, to show the license of uh, public domain. Let me click this. <laughs> so here is a here is an example of. Uh, a resource which is given under public domain if you scroll it down yes here you can see the license type, Creative Commons CCO license. <coughs> all structured data, if you read this line, all structured data from the file name space is available under Creative Commons public domain license. So this is uh, only to show you how you can find the licensing in the content available. So the combination uh, <clears throat> combinations of licenses are given here in a figural form. You can see, you can write public domain license in this form also. This is this stands for uh, if you see in your left hand uh, left hand side, CC by CC by SC is uh, in public domain. Uh, copy and publish attribution required no commercial use yes modify and adapt yes change license yes and under cc by copy and publish yes attribution required yes commercial use yes modify and adapt yes uh, changes uh, change license yes and similarly you can see the conditions 
given for each license in this slide. These are the creative common platforms, Flickr, and uh, Bandcamp, Wikipedia, YouTube, Sketchfab, etc. And these are some creative common platforms for audio, for text, for search engines, for images, for videos. How you can apply CC? If you want to apply Creative Commons license uh, to your content, uh, you have to uh, seek the uh, permission from the copyright holder or, uh, that can apply CC license. Or simply, I just want to take you to a website where you can find the licenses and uh, you will also learn how you can apply license on your created content. Okay, so this is a, theory, a theoretical part. I am uh, skipping this. Yes, how to apply a CC license? Just simply go to uh, search.creativecommerce.org. So my request to you uh, will be that, that uh, you should explore this website. If you click the Creative Commons website, you will see the multiple type of <clears throat> uh, platforms where you can find uh, different for, uh, format of resources. So you can find the media resources, image resources, music resources, videos, 3D model, etc. And then click to explore CC. And if you want to explore the video resources, then just click on Vimeo. Or YouTube. Or you, you just search uh, any image or video if you want, like uh, see it. So I am searching for clouds. <clears throat> and you will find a number of videos related to clouds. You can check the license of the videos and you can use the relevant videos in the content you want to create. So I will share this PPT with you and you can go through this uh, website and explore more. I think uh, there is something happening here. The slide is not moving. So let me complete this presentation here and uh, now I would request you to ask questions if you have any and you I, uh, you must have questions. So if you want to ask anything, you can ask. You can ask here in the chat box or, in, uh, or you can uh, share your questions in the WhatsApp group also. And if there is no query, then uh, I would request Diksha, ma'am, to uh, take this session. Yeah, uh, Diksha, you are not audible. Uh, yes, sir. I'll share this PPT with you and it has link of many websites, uh, websites which are having educational content only. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. I understand. So, thank you so much for patient listening.
and thanks to the coordinator and the host. Thank you, Dr. Gulshan. Uh, it was